Okay, so in this video, we want to discuss geometric sequences. And here's a generic geometric sequence. We take r to be a fixed real number, and the sequence is simply r to the n as n goes from 1 to infinity. So if you write the first few terms of the geometric sequence, you get r to the 1, r, then r squared, then r cubed, then r to the 4, and so forth. So we take larger and larger and larger positive powers of the fixed real number r, and as always, when we consider a sequence, we're asking will, as n goes to infinity, will the sequence converge or diverge? So here's the result in the case of a geometric sequence, and you'll see there are a few possibilities. So we have the limit, as n goes to infinity, of the nth term of our sequence being the nth power of r, and again, r is a fixed real number. So here are the possibilities. We will subdivide the result into four parts. The first part is, if r is less than or equal to negative 1, the limit does not exist. And I'll write a 0 with a slash across it. This means that the limit does not exist. And again, this is if r is less than or equal to negative 1. Now, the limit is equal to 0 if r is strictly between negative 1 and 1. Now, if r is equal to 1, the limit is 1. And this case is obvious because if r is equal to 1, 1 to any power is always 1. And so the sequence is constant. It's 1, 1, 1, 1 forever. And of course, the constant sequence of 1s will converge to 1. And the limit does not exist, but specifically by blowing up if r is strictly larger than 1. So here's the result. Let's look at this now from a very intuitive point of view and see that this is very natural. We'll start with, again, we've already dealt with the case when r is exactly equal to 1. As we've just said, 1 to any power is always 1, and the sequence is just constant and always equals to 1, therefore obviously converges to 1. Let's look now at what if r is larger than 1. So we'll take an actual value of r. Suppose r is 2. And we look at the geometric sequence 2 to the n, as n goes from 1 to infinity. Well, we'll have 2, then 2 squared is 4, then 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the 4 is 16, 2 to the 5 is 32, 2 to the 6 is 64, 2 to the 7 is 128, and so forth. So we can clearly see as we move along the sequence, the terms are getting bigger and bigger every time. In fact, they double every step of the way. So the sequence clearly goes to infinity. So it diverges, but it diverges specifically by blowing up. And again, the intuition is, if you take larger and larger powers of a real number that is bigger than 1, the real number gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it goes out of bounds in the limit. So very intuitive. So we have this case, we have this case. Let's now look at this case. When r is less than or equal to negative 1. First, let's take r to be negative 1. This is a special case. And you'll see why in a second. Negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. And so forth. So you'll have an alternation between negative and positive 1 forever. as when n is even, an even power of negative 1 is positive 1, and when n is odd, an odd power of negative 1 is negative 1. So the sequence will bounce forever between negative 1 and 1, so clearly it does not converge to a unique real value, and so the limit does not exist when r is negative 1. Check. But what if r is strictly less than negative 1? Say we take negative 2. Then the sequence is negative 2 
to the n. So negative 2 to the 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 2 to the 4, positive 16. Negative 2 to the 5, negative 32. And you see where this is going. Exactly the same as 2 to the n, but because we have a negative 1 to the n, there is an alternation in sign. So the term is negative, then larger positive, larger negative, larger positive, larger negative, and so forth. So the sequence will oscillate from very large negatively and very large positively. So it oscillates forever, and so it does not converge to either positive or negative infinity. Half the terms will be really large and positive. The other half will be really large and negative. So again, the limit in this case does not exist. The last possibility when r is strictly between negative 1 and 1. So we'll take a small value that is positive and one that is negative and we'll see what happens in both cases. And we'll see that the limit will be 0. But again, this should be intuitive. If you take a larger and larger power of a real number that is less than 1 in absolute value, the number will become smaller and smaller and smaller. So let's verify this. Now I just want to write this slightly differently as I've just said, if r lies strictly between negative 1 and 1, then this is equivalent to saying that in absolute value r is strictly less than 1. The size of r is less than 1. So let's take, say, the case where r is 1 over 10. So we have r to the n when n goes from 1 to infinity. So 1 over 10 is 0 0.1. 1 over 10 squared is 1 over 100, 0 0.01. 1 over 10 cubed is 1 over 1,000, 0 0.001. And you see, every time that we move one step further, the next term is 10 times smaller than the previous term. So then we'll have 0 0.0001 and so forth. You can clearly see the terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and they will converge to zero. But if r was now negative 1 over 10, and we have the exact same case as we had with positive 2 to the n and negative 2 to the n, the only difference from this sequence and this one is the negative 1 to the n will create an alternation in sign. When n is 1, we have a negative term, negative 0.1, and then we have the alternation. Positive 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, positive 0 0.0001, and so forth. But once again, even though we have an alternation in sign, the terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and the sequence still shrinks to 0. You can also view it in this way, if you simply rewrite negative 1 over 10 to the n as negative 1 to the n times 1 over 10 to the n. You can separate them. Well, 1 over 10 to the n clearly shrinks to 0. Oops. And negative 1 to the n is either plus or minus 1. So if you do plus or minus something that shrinks to zero, the result must also shrink to zero. And that's the intuition. So hopefully the result for the limit of a geometric sequence is fairly intuitive. Always think of it this way. When r is bigger than one, larger and larger powers of r will become bigger and bigger and bigger. The limit will blow up. If r equals one, one to any power is always one, so the sequence converges to one. Any number that is in size strictly less than 1, well, if you take larger and larger powers of a number whose size is less than 1, the number will become smaller and smaller and smaller. Always remember 1 over 10. And so the limit it will shrink to 0. 
And when you have a number that is, again, r is negative 1, it will bounce back and forth between negative and positive 1 forever, so it does not converge. And if r is strictly less than negative 1, then always think of negative 2 to the n. You'll get half your sequence very large negatively, half your sequence very large positively, and so again the limit will oscillate closer and closer between negative and positive infinity, and so once again the limit does not exist. So to make a really short story, the sequence will only converge if r is 1 and the limit is 1, or if the absolute value of r is less than 1 and the limit is equal to 0, and that's it.